ठीक है अस्सलाम वालेकुम वेलकम टू लेक्चर फाइव ऑफ डेटा माइनिंग थिंक बिफोर गेटिंग स्टार्टेड अ कपल ऑफ अनाउंसमेंट्स यू विल बी गेटिंग प्लीज आई डिसाइड योर ग्रुप्स फॉर द प्रोजेक्ट्स सो वी विल बी हैविंग प्रोजेक्ट्स एज ए इंस्ट्रूमेंट इन दिस कोर्स सो प्लीज फॉर्म ए ग्रुप ऑफ अप टू थ्री पीपल so three people is ideal uh, so try to make a group of three people uh, otherwise we'll have too many groups groups and that will be difficult to manage uh, so we will you will probably also get your first assignment handout uh, by this week before the end of this week and we will have about 7 to 10 days to do that assignment it will be primarily on exploratory data analysis and data preprocessing the topics that we are discussing these days so all right so are there any questions from the previous lectures so in the previous lecture we had started talking about data preprocessing and uh, we discussed two categories of activities that can be done in data preprocessing we talked about data cleaning and then we talked about data integration uh so data preprocessing uh, as you know is uh, a bunch of techniques that you can apply uh, to reshape your data and make it more appropriate for the final data mining task uh so this is not the end goal uh, this is usually an intermediary uh, module in your data mining process intermediary uh, stepping stone in your data mining process Uh, but as we also mentioned it does take a lot of time because it's kind of dirty work uh, you have to deal with a lot of variability so it does take a lot of time and energy so uh, today we are going to talk about uh, data reduction so data reduction uh, is actually uh, one of the more important Uh, categories in data preprocessing and uh, the whole idea in data reduction is we want to reduce the size of the data uh, without impacting the important information that is necessary for our analysis so why do you want to reduce the size primarily to improve efficiency uh, it might have some other benefits like you might reduce noise and other artifacts in the data but primarily to improve efficiency to improve the speed of your processing uh sometimes data reduction can also be done as part of eda exploratory data analysis you want to visualize the data by reducing the size of the data uh so data uh, reduction uh, can be further subdivided as dimensionality reduction reduction and then we have what is known as numerosity reduction and then sometimes a third category can also be defined which is called aggregation so there are three main sub categories in data reductions so we will start uh, with dimensionality reduction so dimensionality reduction uh is basically concerned with reducing the number of features of your data so if you recall we defined the data vector as x so this vector uh this is a vector of length m so m is the number of features and let's say x capital x is the data matrix so this data matrix would be of size n by m so where n is the number of observations 
and m the number of features or attributes of variables. So capital X, the matrix, is a data matrix. Small x is one vector, uh, which represents one observation, and its length is of size m. So in dimensionality reduction, we want to reduce the size m. And one of the reasons to do that is to concentrate your information in as few features as possible so that you would need, uh, you can also avoid the issue of curse of dimensionality. Essentially the curse of dimensionality, let me briefly mention this. So the cursor dimensionality is basically states that as you increase the number of features of your data set, you will need exponentially more observations to get the same amount of information. So let's say if your data set has only two features, you might get reasonable information from 100 observations. Let's say if your features increase to, let's say, even 10, then the same sort of information may not be obtained unless you have thousands of observations. So let's say 10,000 observations. So the whole idea is if you have more features, your space is larger. So let's say if you have two dimensional feature space, you can think of a plane. So in this plane, the volume is relatively small. So the observations which are points could fill up this volume fairly evenly. So even 100 observations can fill up this volume fairly evenly. If you add one more, one more dimension, it becomes 3D. The volume actually increases significantly. And if you have the same number of points, let's say 10 points are palletate 2D, may avoid 10 points in 3D would be very few and think of increasing the dimension even more, five, six, seven. So 10 points in let's say 10 dimension would be really, really few, and they would look like outliers from one another, very sparse. So if you have sparse observations, you won't be able to find any pattern, any, any uh, regularity in the data. They, each observation would look like random. So that's why, uh, so that's why we would like to reduce the number of features. And this essentially is the idea of the curse of dimensionality. Okay. Uh, so uh, within dimensionality reduction, there are actually two sub uh, categories again. One is called feature selection. The other is feature extraction. So as I mentioned last time also, sometimes feature extraction is a kind of dimensionality reduction is also called feature extraction. But sometimes dimensionality reduction is the upper category or uski subcategory feature selection or feature extraction. So yeah, thodi si confusion aapko literature mein nazar aayegi. So, but we will follow this, uh, this uh, process. F dimensionality reduction is the main heading. Uski subheadings feature selection or feature extraction. Okay. So in feature selection, we want to select a reduced set of features from the M features. Okay. So, so we have M features and let's say if you want to select, so M after us feature, let's say we want to select K is less than M features. Okay. So in general, there will be various options or multiple options to do this. So we call this the in combinatorics M choose K options. Okay. So let's say M aapke paas 10 hai or K2 hai. Aapka kya banega? 10 factorial. Factorial here.
exploration mark with your attached line. Ten factorial divided by, of course, we have two. Two factorial into eight factorial. Okay, so this is uh, the number of possible options that you have. So in general, this option, the number of options is going to be large. So how do you select from among those options? So usually this is a search process and for pre-processing, we like to reduce the search process uh, and do it as simply as possible. So we will basically not do a exhaustive search, we will do a heuristic search. And heuristic search, we will use the simple idea of greedy approach. So in other words, we will select the best first feature, the second best, the third best, or we will choose the uh, we will delete the worst feature first, then the next worst, and the next worst. So you can go both ways. Either you do selection or you, you reduce or uh, do deletion. So now the third thing is remember we are, I'm saying best or worst. So you need to have a criterion, okay? And you need to have a process, okay? So usually we can have uh, an intrinsic criterion or we can have extrinsic okay? uh, criterion. Very uh, so in intrinsic, you have some measure that would give you a score regarding the usefulness of a particular feature. So, so let's say maybe a function, hai, let's say I call that F, or let me say, let's take an example. Let's say we have four features, A, B, C, and D. Attributes, yeah, features. So I have a function F, A. So this will give me a score of the usability or usefulness of attribute A. Let's say this gives me a value, let's say 10. So F, B, I nikalta hu. This say is 15. F, C, nikala mein. This would give me, let's say, 5. And let's say F D, this will give me, let's say, uh, 20. So if you wanted to select just one feature, then I'll choose the one that is best. In this case, I'll choose D. If I wanted two features after D, I'll select the next best, which is, I think, uh, B. So you'll select in this order D first and then B then A and then C. Okay. So if you wanted to select two features, then D and B would be done. So the intrinsic feature ho uh, This is often domain dependent. So this is not something that you can uh, say generic koi hoga, domain dependent. To, Take an example, let's say you have uh, a classification problem. Uh, so you have attributes A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. And then you have a, another attribute, which is a class. So you have a classification problem and you have an attribute class. So now you can decide which attribute best predicts this class. So you can use a correlation measure that we talked about earlier. So you can use, for example, if class and A, attribute A, B, C, D are categorical chi-square use ka sakte hain aap. If a class, of course, is usually this. Uh, okay, so, uh, kisi ka question tha? If you have a question, hai toh, you can uh, stop me whenever you want to. I don't want to hear
ठीक है सो क्लास आपके पास है सो आपका जो लेट्स से क्लास और एट्रीब्यूट सारे आपके पास कैटेगोरिकल है देन योर स्कोर वुड सिंपली बी योर काई स्क्वायर काई स्क्वायर आप निकालेंगे ए विद क्लास काई आप निकालेंगे बी विद क्लास काई आप निकालेंगे सी विद क्लास एंड काई आप निकालेंगे डी विद क्लास ठीक है जिसका सबसे ज्यादा होगा वो पहला एट्रीब्यूट आप सिलेक्ट करेंगे द नेक्स्ट एंड द नेक्स्ट ठीक है इसी तरह यू कैन यूज अदर मेजर्स एज वेल एज वी से वी टॉक अबाउट ए यू सी आप यूज कर सकते हैं को रिलेशन यूज कर सकते हैं एंट्रोपी यूज कर सकते हैं म्यूचुअल इंफॉर्मेशन यूज कर सकते हैं सो ऑल ऑफ दीज आर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ इंट्रेंसिक इंफॉर्मेशन दे आर मोस्ट रेलिवेंट वैन यू हैव a setting like this where you have a class attribute and the other attributes that you want to select theek okay. hai so intrinsic approach intrinsic major isko sometimes uh, uh, filter approach bhi kehte hain theek okay. hai i know i'm throwing out a lot of names but the whole idea of throwing out these names is because ye different use hote hain literature mein bhi hote hain aapke industry mein bhi nazar aayenge to if someone says something you should know what it is theek hai so feature selection we do a typically greedy feature selection we can use an intrinsic major we can use a extrinsic major intrinsic majors mein ye chi square auc typical hain especially for classification types of problem and the approach that we use is usually called a filter approach you are filtering the attributes out one by one through a greedy approach so let's say your problem is not a classification problem let's say koi descriptive data mining ka problem hai uh, let's say you want to do association mining ya clustering ya koi pattern discovery ka koi problem hai so in that case uh, usually uh, we will be looking for pairs of attributes that contain most information theek hai to usme aap ek cheez kar sakte hain ke so you first select the first two attributes usme pairs le sakte hain for example a b c and d theek hai to you find the pairs a and of course b ek pair hoga और फिर आपके पास ए ऑफ कोर्स ये कॉम्बिनेशन काफी बन जाएंगी बट अगेन वी आर यूजिंग इंट्रेंसिक मेजर अब इन पेयर्स का द पेयर्स दैट हैव द लीस्ट को रिलेशन यू वुड सेलेक्ट फर्स्ट बिकॉज दैट वुड देन कंटेन द मोस्ट इंफॉर्मेशन फॉर योर डेटा सेट इफ बोथ ऑफ दैम आर हाईली को रिलेटेड बोथ एट्रीब्यूट आर द सेम थिंग ठीक है सो यू विल नॉट pick those first if you want to pick only two you will pick the two that has the most uh, that has the least correlation or they are uncorrelated or move are very close to uncorrelated theek okay. hai so once you have selected the two if you want select the third wo bhi fir usko aap add kar sakte hain uh, and then find the correlation between the two as a whole and the third so is tarah again filtering approach one by one you can grow it from uh, a basic set theek hai so any question Okay, so this is feature selection. Uh, we are selecting some k attributes from a larger set of m attributes. We usually use heuristic approach. We don't use an optimal approach, and usually the heuristic is greedy. We select one and the next, the best one, then the next best one, and the next best one until we reach k. So how do you decide? Uh, we basically use a major. depending on our application it could be based on correlation or many of them actually are based on correlation 
and you can correlate the attribute with the class label or you can find the correlation between pairs of attributes. And this approach of selecting is also sometimes called the filter approach. So we talked about the filter approach. The other approach is what is known as the wrapper approach. Or it's may usually map as extrinsic. This is extrinsic, and we use some extrinsic evaluation measure or criterion. Okay. So what is the wrapper approach? Wrapper approach essentially says that let's say you have, you have a data set and for which you want to do some end analysis. Let's say you classification karni, outlier detection karna, ya association mining karni. So you use the measure of that task to de decide which features to use. Okay. So, so let's say my classification ki baat karta. So let's say my attributes wohi hai A, B, C, or D or a class label hai. So let's say we want to do a, solve a classification problem. So which should be the best attributes? Of course, you can select all attributes, right? But so if you want to find the one best attribute, you will make a classifier with only A. You may and find the accuracy of the algorithm. Okay. So A se nikala, B se nikala, C se nikala, D se nikala. Just ke sab se zada accuracy aati hai, wo aap first attribute select kar lete hai. Phir aap usme second add karte hai. Just ke sab se zada accuracy un do ke saath aati hai, wo aapka second select ho jata hai. And if you want to just select two, that's where you stop. So wrapper kyun hai? Because select karne ka baad, jo bhi aapka final task hai, wo chalate hai aap. So that's why this is called the wrapper approach. And you use the measure of that approach to decide which features to select. Okay. Is this idea clear? So just an example, let's say aapne first aap dekha B was the best. B is the best accuracy. Then you B mein aap add karenge A, C, or D separately. Or let's say baad mein pata chala ke aapko baad D dalein to best performance aati accuracy. So B or D aapke attributes select ho jayenge if you wanted just two attributes. Okay, again, we are following a greedy approach. हम वो full search नहीं कर रहे full search भी कर सकते हैं आप find all uh, basically check for all the power sets of those four attributes आप A का भी करें B का भी करें C का भी करें D का भी करें A B का करें A C का करें A D का करें B C का करें B D का करें A B C का करें B C D का करें और A B C D का करें सारों का करके देखें कौन सा best आता of course this was much more time consuming so you can use a greedy approach, one one attribute karke kare and then add one at a time. Okay. Similarly, if you are doing clustering, to clustering ka koi aapka major hoga. So for clustering, we can use uh, various majors like F1 score bhi wahan use ho jata hai. Ya uh, silhouette coefficient hai, wo use ho jata hai. We'll talk about those later on. But unke majors use honge for selecting. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So now let's move on to feature extraction. Uh, 
So in feature selection, we were selecting from among those M attributes. In feature extraction, uh, we usually first transform the feature space into a new feature space. And then from that transform space, select the K attributes that are most appropriate or most relevant for us. So first, into new space, okay? And then select. So usually this transformation is done using some criterion. And once this transformation is done, you, you usually have a well-defined way of selecting the features, okay? So in feature extraction, uh, actually this, this category is very large. It may have like literally dozens of techniques and feature extraction key. So we will discuss only two or three. Uh, in general, these techniques can be linear or non-linear. Okay? Meaning that the transformation is linear or non-linear. Okay? So transformation from the input space to some new feature space. So this transformation that we are talking about, so this can be linear or non-linear. And from the, in the new space, then we select the best features. So let's look at some representative examples. And you might have talked, heard about this as well, previously principle. So PCA, so this is a popular linear uh, feature extraction technique or dimensional reduction technique. Uh, so we won't go into the math of this. We are, I'll just give you the intuition and the basic idea of how to use this. So what does PCA do? So remember we talked about the data matrix X. So this is N by M matrix. M is features and observations. So the PCA basically operates on the features, which is M. So it creates a, a covariance matrix of those features. So you, if you create a covariance matrix, that matrix will be M by M. So, and then it generates the eigenvectors, which basically are uh, axes in that space, M space, which have the highest variance. So, So variance ka matlab spread hota, of course. Can, let's say aapke paas, uh, maybe I can try my writing skills again. So basically, uh, if you plot of course, we are plotting in 2D. You draw for it, Yes, sir. Okay, so if you plot the data cloud, cloud ka matlab ye hai you have data points, uska, main, uska edges you have cloud ka wo main draw kar raha. So ye edges hai, cloud hai. So iska matlab hai, if you look at the x-axis, iska spread the cream yaan se yaan tak. Y-axis ka spread thoda hai. So this spread is an indication of the variance. Of course, variance is the more technical term. But to get an idea, if the data spreads much larger on the x-axis, then it says we, we know that it has a largest variance. If it's spread on the y-axis, it's smaller than its variance is small. So what PCA does, and of course, variance means that if there is a lot of variance, means that there is more information along that axis. So let's say aapka data cloud kuch is tarah ka hai. Of course, your typical example di jati aapko textbooks mein nazar aayegi. Theek hai? Ab if I make a new axis like this, aap dekhein ki is axis mein variance sabse zyada hai aur dusre axis pe variance sabse thoda hai. So what PCA does is it finds these axis for you. The axis along which the variance of the data is maximum 
लेट से ये टू डी है तो फिर ऑफकोर्स नेक्स्ट एक्सेस वुड हैव द मिनिमम वेरियंस बट लेट से आपके पास टेन डी का डेटा सेट है द फर्स्ट डायमेंशन दैट पी सी ए फाइन्स वुड हैव द मैक्सिमम वेरियंस ऑफ द डेटा द सेकेंड वुड हैव द नेक्स्ट मैक्सिमम द थर्ड वुड हैव द नेक्स्ट मैक्सिमम एंड द टेंथ वुड हैव द लीस्ट वेरियंस ठीक है सो पी सी ए इज ए टेक्निक दैट फाइंड यू ए न्यू सेट ऑफ एक्सेस ए न्यू कोआर्डिनेट सिस्टम सच दैट अलॉन्ग द फर्स्ट कोआर्डिनेट यू हैव द मैक्सिमम वेरियंस and along the last coordinate you have the minimum variance and of course these coordinates are ordered from highest to lowest variance so one thing that you can see right away is pca does applies only to numeric data so if your attributes are categorical then you can apply पी सी ए सो नंबर्स पे चलता है वेरियंस ऑनली वर्क ऑन नंबर्स ठीक है ठीक है सो आई हैव डिफाइंड माई डेटा मेट्रिक्स एक्स यू विल हैव टू क्रिएट द कोवेरियंस मेट्रिक्स एम बाय एम कोवेरियंस मेट्रिक्स ऑफकोर्स वो कैलकुलेशन का प्रोसेस है बट आई वोट बोर यू विद डैट Once you have applied PCA, कोई भी आप टूल यूज कर सकते हैं मैट लैब कर सकते हैं आर कर सकते हैं पाइथन की कोई लाइब्रेरी कर सकते हैं यू कैन यूज दैट यू विल टिपिकली गेट ए आइगन वैक्टर मेट्रिक्स लेट मी कॉल दैट डब्ल्यू ठीक है इसको वेट मेट्रिक्स भी कह सकते हैं एंड दिस इज ऑफ साइज एम बाय एम सो दिस matrix contains columns which are unit vectors that represent of course normalized eigen vectors and wo unit vector ban jate hain that are unit vector that represent the axes that pc has found the first column would be the first axis first coordinate along which variance is maximum the second column would be the second coordinate along which the next highest variance occurs and so on theek hai so so given this uh so this is the full m by m eigen vector so if you want to do dimensionality reduction what you can do is you can create a new matrix w prime which in which you drop some of the columns on the right the least significant eigen vectors or coordinates theek hai to ye phir aapka let's say ho jayega matrix m by k where of course k is less than m theek hai so once you have done this of course ye k uh, ye you select the first k baki m minus k drop kar diye first k aapne select kar liye because these are the ones that contain the most information so once you have done this then simply you need to project your original data matrix onto this coordinate system and you will get the new data ठीक है सो प्रोजेक्शन क्या है सो so, ओरिजिनल मेरे पास एक्स था तो एक्स प्राइम नया बन जाएगा मेरे पास सो दिस वुड बी सिंपली बी एक्स है एक्स बाय एम हाँ ठीक है एक्स एंड डब्ल्यू दिस इज मैट्रिक्स मल्टीप्लिकेशन सो एक्स इज ए मैट्रिक्स डब्ल्यू इज ए मैट्रिक्स सो इस मैट्रिक्स का आउटपुट क्या होगा एन बाय एम एंड देन यू हैव एम by k gives you what n by k right so x prime is a new matrix of size n by k so this is your reduced data okay so linear simple linear algebra you have gotten the weight matrix w using some pc algorithm which is the matrix of eigen vectors you keep only the first k let's say aapne sirf k dimensions pe 
काम करना है तो यू कीप द फर्स्ट के ऑफ दिस मैट्रिक्स ड्रॉप द रेस्ट सो डब्ल्यू प्राइम जो है वो छोटा हो जाएगा अब वो डब्ल्यू प्राइम इज योर प्रोजेक्शन मैट्रिक्स आपका एक्स उस पर ऊपर प्रोजेक्ट करें तो यू गेट द न्यू डेटा ठीक है सो पी सी एज कॉमनली यूज एज ए प्री प्रोसेसिंग फॉर मैनी टास्क लाइक क्लासिफिकेशन एंड क्लस्टरिंग इट इज ऑल्सो यूज फॉर एक्सप्लोरेटरी डेटा एनालिसिस लेट से आपके ओरिजिनल डेटा सेट है फिफ्टी फीचर्स फिफ्टी फीचर्स so you can project them into two features and then visualize them theek hai to do features mein aap karke fir aap dekh sakte hain ki data kis tarah nazar aaya 50 features ko to nahi aap dekh sakte hain so this is also used for eda exploratory data analysis but remember that these features are not to original features these are linear combinations of your original feature The PCA is a new coordinate system. It's a new axis. Let's say your, uh, let's say I say that your original was one feature age, was one feature the weight, was, or let's say one feature height. The new features will be. They will be combinations of these features. We can study them in theory, but in general, in data mining, we don't need them to be able to see them. But the key point to remember is that we can't say that the first feature is age or the second feature. After transformation, दूसरा weight है या तीसरा height है. It would be some combination of these features. ठीक है? Linear combination, of course. All right. Any questions? ओके सिमिलर टू पी सी एज वट इज नॉट अ सिंगुलर वैल्यू डिकम्पोजिशन में ये मैं क्विकली बता देता हूँ आप खुद ही बेशमक बाद में पढ़ लें डिकम्पोजिशन ठीक है एस पी डी बेसिकली इट्स अनदर डिकम्पोजिशन टेक्निक इट्स ऑल्सो लीनियर so x uh is to transpose form me likh lo okay ये जो टी है ये ट्रांसपोज है इज इक्वल टू यू दिस इज ऑल्सो इन अदर मेट्रिक्स एस मेट्रिक्स है एक दिस इज बाय द वे डायगोनल मेट्रिक्स एंड देन वी हैव वी ट्रांसपोज मेट्रिक्स तो आपका जो ओरिजिनल एक्स मेट्रिक्स है वो आप इस तरह ट्रांसपोज कर लेते हैं ऑफ कोर्स The intuition behind this is पहले PCA में आपने m by m का covariance matrix बनाया था उसके आगे में वेक्टर ढूंढे थे This technique works in both directions simultaneously m by m का भी covariance matrix पे operate करता और n by n covariance matrix पे भी operate करता तो ये जो u और v वो दोनों की uh, dimensions में आपके पास uh, matrices आ जाते हैं and then you can work with uh, this u and v or you can reduce the size by dropping some columns of u and v okay. so if you let's say you want to retain only the top k features so u ke column drop kar denge v ke bhi column drop kar denge of course wo transpose ho jayega to wo uske kuch rows drop ho jayenge isi tarah jo s hai sigma hai which is usually a diagonal matrix uske diagonals bhi utne kam ho jayenge k reh jayenge sirf if you do that you will get a new value of x transpose uh this is more commonly applied to textual data but it's also applied to uh, uh other data sets as well so it's kind of similar to pca it's still linear by the way pca ke non linear versions bhi hain which we typically call the probabilistic pca ya kernel pca so we wouldn't go into that uh non linear bhi aap kar sakte hain isko 
Uh, one other linear technique very quickly, which is known as non negative matrix factorization. This is again a linear uh, decomposition technique, matrix decomposition technique. Uh, so essentially, it's made your matrix X, two matrix may divide you at A and B. Okay. So, uh, and you can set the dimensions of A and B. So basically, you have uh, to say that NX is N by M, hai, right? So, you have A hoga, wo hoga N by K, and B is uh, K by uh, wait a second. Multiply the size C ke uh uske K be for ni putta actually uh So it's a reconstruction decomposition technique. So if you do the multiplication, you'll get a matrix again back of N by M. Okay. So uh, if you want to drop something, uh, so Actually, uh, I think you can't reduce the dimension directly like this. Basically, used for removing noise. Actually, you can reconstruct the original X. So I, I probably have to double check this. reduction Because if you multiply n by k by k by m, you will get the original n by m matrix. Okay. Or a or b matrix, and you you will find this by ensuring that the reconstructed matrix X should be as close as possible to the original matrix X. Okay. In PCA, we do what we do? Covariance maximize karte along the coordinate system. Here, we ensure that the reconstruction error or between the reconstructed matrix and the original matrix is a minimum. So optimization problem solve. Karte so non-negative matrix factorization, it can be used for noise reduction, uh, dimensionality reduction, ka thoda sa mujhe abhi confusion ho I'll check this and maybe mention this in the next class. So uh, finally, we'll talk about autoencoders. Autoencoders, you probably not find it in the book uh, because this is uh, a more, it is an old technique, but it has become very popular in recent years. And it is quite effective, actually. Uh, it's quite popular used in industry also. So autoencoders, of course, comes from neural networks. Uh, the idea is, uh, let me explain this. So again, we start with our data matrix. Our data matrix was X, right? Uh, but let's only look at one, which is, of course, N observations. And observations of uh, M, thickest length. Thicken, yeah, it's an A row was one observation of length M. So let's talk about just one vector X. Thicken, I right, sorry, length M. So we have a neural network, a feed forward neural network. Input has M units. So feed forward neural network, input M units, okay? corresponding to the input vector. Then we have a hidden layer. Hidden layer would have K less than M units. Okay? And this is a nonlinear layer. I'll be equation. 
and then we have an output output layer which is again m your original size reconstruction ho rahi hai theek hai and of course this neural network would be trained to ensure that the reconstructed x should be equal to or similar to or closer to the original x so we minimize the root mean square error or mean squared error or the sum of squared error so matrix banta kya hai uh, uh sorry mara jo calculation banti kya hai so you have a input layer you have a hidden layer you have an output layer simple auto encoder theek hai ab input pe aapke paas inputs to hidden layer pe aapke paas weight matrix let's me say kehta hu w hai so this is weight ठीक है इसको वन कह देता हूँ ठीक है एंड डब्ल्यू टू दिस इज फ्रॉम हिडन टू आउटपुट तो डब्ल्यू वन का साइज क्या होगा सो हिडन लेयर आपके पास के था ठीक है के बाय एम इनपुट ठीक है W2 का साइज क्या होगा W2 का साइज जो है आउटपुट हमारे पास M था बाय K, ठीक है सो नाउ व्हाट आर द इक्वेशंस दैट वी हैव लेट्स से द आउटपुट ऑफ द हिडन लेयर इज Y, द वेक्टर Y. सो दिस इज सिंपली गिवन बाय द सिग्मोइड और द टेंजेंट हाइपरबोलिक ऑफ मल्टीप्लाइंग योर जो था आपका W1 वन इंटू एक्स डब्ल्यू वन इज अ मेट्रिक्स एक्स इज अ वैक्टर so this will give you a vector y so this is the operation of the first layer ab second layer pe bhi isi tarah hoga you have a new output x prime uh usually the second layer ki jo uh, output hai linear hi hoti hai but uh, sigmoid bhi kar sakte hain straight line uh we have uh, w2 into y again a weight matrix vector multiplication तो ये जो x प्राइम आ गया सो आवर लॉस फंक्शन जो न्यूरो नेटवर्क में होता है वी वॉन्ट टू इंश्योर दैट x प्राइम इज एज क्लोज टू x, ठीक है सो दैट्स हाउ यू फिक्स द पैरामीटर w1 वन एंड डब्ल्यू टू दिस इज एक्चुअली ट्रेनिंग बट वेर इज द डायमेंशनल रिडक्शन हेयर जब आपने इसको ट्रेन कर लिया इफ यू गिव ए न्यू वैक्टर कोई भी नया वेक्टर x दें आपके पास है विच इज ऑफ साइज ऑफ कोर्स m उसका आप वाई निकाल सकते हैं सिग्मोइड w1 आपने कैलकुलेट कर लिया हुआ है राइट निकाल लिया हुआ है मल्टीप्लाइड विद x एंड दिस इज ऑफ साइज k ठीक है सो दिस इज द रिड्यूस डायमेंशन फॉर दिस वेक्टर x विच इज y इन दिस केस y जो है ना लोअर केस है so any questions the auto encoder thoda sa hum fir se revisit karenge when we discuss outlier detection ye auto encoder encoder wahan bhi use hota hai ye equation hai wahan bhi aayenge but auto encoder can also be used directly for outlier detection so uh so these are the two, three four techniques that i wanted to mention but as i said earlier there are like dozens of techniques under dimensionality reduction or feature extraction uh so of course each has their small advantages and disadvantages so so as i said primarily some are linear some are non linear so pca or nmf uh, या एस बी डी या लीनियर ऑटो इनकोडर इज नॉन लीनियर
no questions. Challenge. So if there are no questions, so let's move forward. So this was dimensionality reduction. And uh, we talked about feature extraction and feature selection. So now let's move on to numerosity reduction. So in dimensionality reduction, we reduce the number of attributes or features. In numerosity reduction, typically we reduce the number of observations. So how many observations do we have? We have n observations. So instead of n observations, we would like to reduce them to, let's say, some s less than n observations. Okay. So uh, there are actually a number of techniques here again. Uh, the most common or popular here is of course sampling. Okay, so uh, you must have some idea about what sampling is. So if you have 100, let's say observations, you want to select a sample that is of size 10, let's say S is 10, N is 100. So which approach would you use? So usually we use a uh, simple random sampling. Which is sometimes also abbreviated as SRS. So in simple random sampling, uh, actually there are two options here. With replacement and without replacement. Okay. Uh, so let's first talk about without replacement. So what happens, let's say you have, uh, let's say you have uh, 100 students or 100 observations of something. So you want to select a sample of size 10. So, so let me just give them IDs, let's say one, two, three, 200. Okay. The IDs manage the observations go. So you generate a random number between one and hundred. So whatever that number comes out, random number generate ho hai, to wo aap select kar lenge. So let's say thirty-five aata hai, to thirty-five is selected. Then you generate a random number again. Let's say twelve aa gaya, twelve select ho gaya. Phir kiya apne ninety aa gaya, ninety select ho gaya. And let's say for some, there is a chance ke phir 12 aa gaya, but 12 is mein koi nahi tha. Theek hai? So you cannot select this. Theek hai? So you have to regenerate the random number and uh, so that you get a number that is different from this. So aapne phir kiya, to let's say aapke paas 99 aa gaya and so on. So you generate a sample by uh, generating a random number and selecting the ID that has been generated by the random number generator. If you get a repeat ID, you don't select it because you have already selected it, you generate the number again until the desired sample size has been obtained. So this is without replacement. So if you do with replacement, so there is a possibility that you might get the same number again. Okay. So 65, 25, uh, let's say 12, 50, 99, 100, 55, and so on. So there is a possibility that you might have multiple copies of the same observation. Okay. Uh, 
from a purely statistical perspective, uh, the simple random sampling without replacement is preferred. Why is it preferred? Because its sampling is unbiased. And again, why is it unbiased? Because if you think about, uh, talk about sampling with without replacement, uh, so basically with replacement is unbiased. If you do without replacement, what happens? Let's say you uh, let's say 80 samples select Kali. So if you have selected 80 samples, how many would be left? Only 20 would be left. So the probability of selecting one from those 20 would now be one over 20. While at the start, the selecting of any one of those was one over 100. So you're actually biasing your selection as the number of selections increase. So this is for the case without sampling. So, so without, without replacement produces bias samples. Okay. Why? Because the probability of picking any particular value is dependent on what you have picked previously. Okay. Shuru mein to ki probability, let's say one over hundred hogi. Let's say 100 ka sample kar rahe, the 1 over 100 hogi pali dafa. 1 over 100. Uske baad 1 over 99 ho jayegi because 1 has already been selected. Until at the end, let's say jab A ki sample rai gaya hooga, to wo 100% chance hai wohi select hooga. Of course, we don't go to that extreme, but phir bhi, uh, as you move forward, your sampling probability would vary. While in the case of with replacement, it will always be one over 100. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, this preferred way, but sometimes uh, uh, we just stick with without replacement because sometimes they're easy to uh, implement. And for many uh, data mining applications, once you, once, when you have lots of data, let's say you have 1 million observations. Hai. Us 1 million observations, mein, let's say you have to sample 200. Ka lena hai, then it wouldn't make much difference that you have with sampling, kare, with replacement or without replacement. Kare, because the difference would be almost negligible. Probability of fark nahi padega. So, so in data mining, when the number of the population size is very large, when n is very large and sample size is small, then you can do any of those two techniques. But from a purely theoretical perspective, with replacement is better because it preserves the original distribution of the data, while without replacement would distort it, would bias it. Okay, so we talked about the simple random sampling with and without replacement. You can also do more sophisticated random sampling, which we typically call stratified random sampling. So, so as the name suggests, instead of sampling globally, we sample from stratas that we have preformed based on our domain knowledge. So, for example, in the case of uh, the undergrad undergrad student body at LUMS, in, we can maybe sample, or let's say undergrad and graduate student body at LUMS, we can sample using simple random sampling, or we can sample using two stratas. One strata is for undergrad, the other strata is for grads. So, um, undergrads ka separate SRS karenge, grad ki separate S SRS karenge. Okay. So, so just to ensure that we get reasonable samples from each strata. So grad student obviously lumps me both thode undergrads both. Zada hai. So if so 
लेट से वन थाउजेंड रेशियो हंड्रेड का फर्क है टेन का फर्क है ठीक है सो इफ यू डू ए यूनिफॉर्म सैम्पलिंग ओवर द होल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सो यू मे नॉट बी एबल टू कैप्चर ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट्स तो इसलिए हम ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट को सेपरेट करके उनको सेपरेट सैम्पल कर सकते हैं सो दिस इज कॉल्ड स्ट्रेटिफाइड सैम्पलिंग सो दिस इज यूजफुल वंस इफ यू हैव डिफरेंट स्ट्रेटाज इन योर डेटा दैट यू वॉन्ट टू रिटेन इन योर सैम्पल So stratas basically uh, can be formed in any way. You can form stratas through clusters also. So you can apply a clustering algorithm and, and then do sampling within each cluster. Okay. So cluster-based sampling is also possible. So why would we want to do this? If you want, if the different groups of interest have various sizes or differing sizes, one is very large, the other is very small. then you like to sample separately all right any questions Okay. Uh, so we were talking about numerosity reduction, meaning that we want to reduce the number of observations, and we talked about sampling. So you can also reduce numerosity by directly applying some other uh, technique like clustering or histogram analysis, and then select those clusters or samples from those clusters. So actually, sampling is the more common. and preferred approach within sampling you can also do clustering or histogram analysis like we we talked about right now using stratas so basically essentially a ki technique hai that is practically used with the sampling sampling under sub categories aa jati hai you can do sampling uh, in stratas that you have defined through predefined categories like graduate and graduate students or you can define stratas through clusters or histogram analysis Okay. All right. The last thing that I wanted to talk about here was aggregation. By the way, we are talking about data reduction. Data reduction. We have three things we said: dimensionality reduction, numerosity reduction, and third was aggregation or summarization. So this is uh, again a specific way of uh, reducing data, uh, and this applies to, of course. Uh, data that is in a particular format uh so usually uh transactional data jo hota hai na wo aap usko aggregate kar sakte hain very easily and transactional data can be uh where you have counts of various events so usual iski example aap de sakte hain let's say you have a retail store and uh, you have counts of sales at various retail stores so let's say hum dimensions ki baat karte hain ek dimension stores hai theek hai aur dusri dimension item hai theek hai 2d let's say main banata hu let me take some examples here so let's say do store hai aapke store let's say ek dha hai aur ek let's say gulbarg hai theek hai और आप सिर्फ दो आइटम्स पे इंटरेस्टेड हैं लेट्स से आई एम जस्ट गिव एन एग्जांपल एक आइटम है लेट्स से आई डोंट नो एग्जांपल ले लेते हैं हम मोबाइल की कोई ले लेते हैं लेट्स से एस 22 एंड देन द अदर आइटम इज आईफोन व्हाटएवर 13 चल रहा है 14 चल रहा है ठीक है अह सो so you have data uh, we have these two dimensions and these two uh, uh, values in these dimensions you can have a cross tab which counts number of transactions in each of these uh, cells so let me draw a kind of table the columns and the stores hain so pehla column dha the dusra column hai kehta hu gulbarg aur rows pehla row jo hai wo s22 hai and then we have the iphone theek hai
एस ट्वेंटी टू के डी एच ए के सेल लेट से मैं कहता हूँ टेन है और गुलबर्स के सेल लेट से फिफ्टीन है ठीक है और आईफोन के लेट से मैं कहता हूँ सेल्स फाइव हैं और फाइव हैं ठीक है सो लेट से योर डेटा इज ऑफ दिस फॉर्मेट सो अब एग्रीगेशन क्या चीज़ है एग्रीगेशन इज यू बेसिकली कोलेप सम डायमेंशन एंड सम अप ऑल दोज वैल्यूज फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कोलेप्स द डायमेंशन ऑफ स्टोर दो स्टोर है ना डी एच ए और गुलबर्ग सो इफ यू कोलेप्स दैट डायमेंशन ठीक है सो यू विल गेट ओनली टू वैल्यूज ना एस ट्वेंटी टू इसकी वैल्यू ट्वेंटी फाइव होगी और आई फोन की वैल्यू होगी टेन ठीक है यू हैव समड अप ऑल द ऑल द वैल्यूज इन द कॉलम्स फॉर ईच रो सो यू हैव कोलेप्स the store dimension so you can do this for the other also let's say if you collapse the item dimension to aapke paas phir do reh jayenge columns dha aur gulberg aur unme values honge ek 15 hoga aur dusra hoga i think 15 and 520 theek hai so this is the all sales in dha all sales in gulberg ठीक है ऊपर था ऑल आई फोन ऑल एस ट्वेंट एस ट्वेंटी टू सो एज यू कैन सी यू आर रिड्यूसिंग द साइज ऑफ द डेटा थ्रू वट इज नोन एज एग्रीगेशन ऑफकोर्स एज यू कैन सी रिड्यूसिंग द साइज ऑफ द डेटा डज लूज इज इंफॉर्मेशन एंड दिस इज ट्रू फॉर ऑल अदर डेटा रिडक्शन टेक्निक्स देर इज सम लॉस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन तो यहाँ भी लॉस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन है सो इफ यू कोलेप्स द स्टोर डायमेंशन दैन यू डोंट नो के जो एस ट्वेंटी टू का जो ट्वेंटी फाइव आ रहा है वो टोटल सेल्स हैं वी डोंट नो द सेल्स फॉर द इंडिविजुअल स्टोर सिमिलरली आई फोन का टेन है तो वो टोटल सेल्स एंड नॉट फॉर द इंडिविजुअल स्टोर एंड ऑन द फ्लिप साइड इफ यू कोलेप्स द आइटम डायमेंशन तो आपको टोटल से डी एच ए की आ रही है गुलबर्ग की आ वो पता नहीं है कौन से एस ट्वेंटी टू है कौन से आई फोन है so by the way this whole uh, approach is more generally called cube aggregation so ye to maine two dimensions batayi thi na you can have multi dimensions so it basically hypercube to so, aap fir unko us cube ko aap different dimensions ko collapse karke you can aggregate the data theek okay. hai so this kind of uh, reduction is very appropriate where you have transactional information where you have counts of events for various uh, dimensions then you can collapse some dimensions to reduce the size of the data theek hai so i think that brings us to the end of data reduction the next uh, one is we are also running out of time i know that is transformation theek hai so i mentioned this previously also jitni bhi cheeze abhi tak data pre processing mein padhi hain they can be called transformations also because har cheez kuch change kar rahi hai data ko but of course in the textbook ye ek separate category inhone di hui hai so that's why we are discussing this as a transformation theek hai तो इसमें जो मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट है वो नॉर्मलाइजेशन है वी विल स्टार्ट दिस नेक्स्ट टाइम नॉर्मलाइजेशन ठीक है सो नॉर्मलाइजेशन इज ए ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन जस्ट लाइक लेट्स से पीसीए इज आल्सो ए ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन न्यूमरोसिटी रिडक्शन इज ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन डेटा क्लीनिंग इज ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन एक्चुअली सारी चीजें ही हैं बट एक सेपरेट कैटेगरी भी बनाई हुई हमने अच्छा किसी का क्वेश्चन है uh yes sir uh, i just wanted to ask what is cube aggregation that and is, is that cube aggregation ji ji a cube aggregation wohi hai jo maine upar discuss kiya hai wahan cube 2d tha to cube cube aggregation uh if you have uh, multiple dimensions we call it a cube to yahan maine jo example okay. di thi two dimensions thi ek store tha ek आइटम था 
so would this be called cube aggregation yes it would be yeah in general it okay. would be called cube aggregation yes okay and if we have more than two dimensions per usme bhi cube bol sakte hain aise ha ji bilkul agar four or five dimensions ho ji ji actually in literature mein isko cube bhi kehte hain har ek ko although to be technically correct you can call it hypercube also but isko cube bhi kehte hain even if it is greater than 3 okay okay thank you so this actually cube aggregation jo concept hai na ye kafi common hai in data warehousing uh ओलैप एक पुरानी टेक्निक अभी भी यूज होती है ऑपरेशनल एनालिसिस में ऑनलाइन एनालिटिकल प्रोसेसिंग सो इट इज वेरी कॉमन इन ओलैप एज वेल एज इन डेटा वेयर हाउसिंग ठीक है किसी और का कोई क्वेश्चन था एक कोई मेरे ख्याल से मैसेज आया था ठीक है, ओके, अच्छा मेरे ख्याल से वी आर रनिंग आउट ऑफ टाइम, सो ए कपल ऑफ अनाउंसमेंट आपका कुछ देर चलाएंगे हम मेरा अदर कोर्स एन एल पी में मैंने फिर थर्सडे का रख दिया so as i said earlier so you should expect your first assignment by the end of this week 